I have a pair of uh, JLH69 style Class A amplifiers here. They are left and right or mirror images of each other. As you can see, everything's duplicated but mirrored. This will be number seven in my JLH amplifier series. I got this from AliExpress. It was already constructed. It is available in kit form. It's marked uh, Zhang Seng 1969 Rev 2. The AliExpress seller is Music Valley Store. And to correct my previous mail video, I did buy two of these. The reason I bought two was to make sure they were available in mirrored pairs. If you buy one, you don't know what you're going to get. Now, I bought a, a finished board, well, two of them, a $13.58 a piece versus $10.00. 18 cents a piece and the total order came to 3205 they do mention here that you've got to buy 2.0 channels <laughs> to get two channels you need to buy two pieces this refers to the uh, pair of output transistors and this seller and this is the first this has happened has a pretty accurate schematic of his product. The only three errors I found were these output transistors are mislabeled and this input capacitor is actually a 2.2 microfarad. I believe if I read Chinese uh, this wording here refers to this point A as having exactly half BCC and that's accomplished by adjusting VR1 so VR1 adjusts this point VR2 adjusts total current flow and they say something like that here. 2K resistor is a quiescent current. 100K is the midpoint voltage adjust. That's this one here. And midpoint is adjusted here. As I've done for the other amplifiers, I have a schematic with parts that I more or less verified and a board layout and some notes. The board layout is this board. This board is a mirror image of this, but it also has different resistor callouts. For example, these two resistors, I have to say this one and this one, are complementary to each other. This is R3, this is R11, this is R8, this is R17. This is an LED, this is LED1. The callouts on this board layout are for this board. The callouts on the schematic are for this board. The seller also provides two board layouts and you can see these complementary part callouts Q8, Q4, Q7, Q3. Now all of this information seller's page, the seller's board layout, this drawing are available in the directory 
below in the description. As always, if you're going to check one of my drawings, check the subdirectory and make sure you're looking at the most current drawing. I do make mistakes on these and I try to correct it and update the drawings. Likewise, if you find an error, please drop me a comment. I fastened a heat sink to this uh, amplifier and I would like to point out these terminals. I have amplifier number six. It's been laying on the bench. You see it has these box terminals. I don't really like these box terminals. Maybe I'm just not in favor of European style clamping devices. This amplifier has actual clamping devices. You see it's got a, a lifting plate and I can insert a wire on either side of that plate that is on either side of the screw. I can even use two wires and the plate will clamp down nice and tight. I like these style terminals better than uh, these box style. One of the things that is a hallmark of the uh, hood amplifier. After describing the original amplifier, which had no variable uh, resistors in it, Hood suggested adjusting the voltage at this point to one half of the input voltage, that is power supply voltage. Most of the later versions of the JLH amplifier provide for a variable resistor to adjust this, which I've called the X point. It's actually marked on the circuit board, this one anyway, as T1. And there's a little Had provided, although you could just as well get on this end of the uh, electrolytic capacitor. That is this electrolytic capacitor. I've applied 24 volts DC and I adjusted this for 12 volts measured to common here. The other thing that more recent versions of the JLH amplifier have is, is a variable resistor here. JLH uses fixed resistor. And that adjusts the current through this. Most people just measure the current supplied, assuming that the current through these transistors will be inconsequential. So I adjusted this using this to 1 amp. 24 volts, 1 amp. That means I'm going to dissipate 24 watts here. Being a Class A amplifier, as long as it's powered up, it's going to de develop 24 watts worth of heat. No matter what the volume is, 24 volts and 1 amp is 24 watts. We have three photographs from the original JLLH amplifier article in 1969. This involves a distortion analyzer which I don't have access to. This is a square wave input at 50 Hertz. If we assume this is zero volts right here, you'll notice that the wave extends about one and a half spaces above. 
here at the beginning of the wave. And then, due to capacitive coupling effects, it drops to about half. So we have approximately 50% slope on what was supposed to be a square wave. Looking at the oscilloscope, I have an input square wave here. I power up the amplifier, and there's the output square wave. I center it. So it's up about one unit there, down about one unit here. The slope at the top is almost negligible. The slope at the bottom looks just like JLH's original oscilloscope picture. So we're inputting a square wave. We're outputting a distorted square wave. This is driving an 8 ohm load. The RMS voltage of this wave form is 8.8 .8 volts, 8.6 volts, pretty close to 10 watts. I'm going to change this to 50 kilohertz. On the JLH photograph, shows this. And at 50 kilohertz we're seeing this. Fairly nice bottom half, not so good in the upper half. I look at 5 kilohertz. Everything looks great there. There's 200 hertz. Perfect. Go up to uh, 20 kilohertz. And there's 20 kilohertz. 20 kilohertz, we're beginning to see a little bit of rounding. So this little amplifier doesn't quite make it. Actually, I think uh, looking at all of them, amplifier number six is a little bit better. It's a shame I had high hopes for this. It's very well laid out double-sided, nice silk screen. I'd say out of the seven I've done so far, this one, number six, seems to be the best. MS is like riding into 